Tonight, 200,000 Queenslanders affected as the flood crisis continues to spread. Most of Emerald underwater, homes and supermarkets abandoned, evacuation centres filling up. Rockhampton on high alert as all that water heads to the beef capital. And New Year celebrations in the southeast to help flood victims across the state. This is 7 News with Patrick Condren and Talitha Cummins. Good evening. As Queensland counts down to the new year, the state remains in the grip of a flood disaster which is now affecting 200,000 people. It covers an area the size of France and Germany combined. Emerald is tonight underwater in its worst flood on record. Peter Doherty is there and Peter, how are the residents coping? Talitha, for many, the size of this disaster is difficult to comprehend, but for the locals here, there's been no time to think, just survive. The mayor now says 1,000 homes have water inside them, 3,000 are completely surrounded. New Year's Eve on the eve of disaster. As the Nagoa River surged towards its peak early this morning, there were final frantic evacuations. One-day-old babies loaded onto Blackhawks along with hospital patients to be flown out of town. Then, in the early hours of this morning... That'll be the 2010 mark there, right there for the floods. The real indicator was right here. Homes inundated, streets of them underwater, their residents long gone. I think it's horrendous. I think there's too much of it. And it's quite frightening as to where it's going to go. It went anywhere it wanted. The best engineered sandbagging did nothing. There's a lot more people out there, hell of a lot worse off than us. From the air, the big, bad picture is revealed. The Weather Bureau says the peak was 16.05 metres. That's 70 centimetres higher than 2008 and a record. This would be the highest. Obviously, the devastation is, is a lot more than anything. Um, and, you know, the town certainly got a lot bigger, so you got a lot more risk and a lot more, uh, you know, people affected. More businesses flooded too. The town's second shopping centre went under and with it Woolworths. McDonald's and KFC also out of action, but the real heartache was across town. You don't expect to come home to something like this, you know. While the official peak was this morning, some areas kept rising as the water moved around Emerald. So for the next couple of days, this is the only way around many parts of town as Emerald waits for the water to slowly go down. And this is why Fairburn Dam, just outside Emerald, at 175%. It's a million megalitres above normal capacity. And that water has to flow past Emerald, which remains cut off. The rail line can't be inspected for another day. The army is flying in temporary accommodation. Over 500 people are in three Red Cross shelters. It's better than being in the water, isn't it? We just don't know whether our house is underwater or not at the moment, so when we find that out, we'll sort out what we're going to do. And it is a tragic sight with 1,000 homes underwater. Today, 7 News reporter Erin Edwards was taken to the worst areas in a dangerous ride in a boat, revealing the extensive property damage. This is the only way in, and it's dangerous. Yeah, and it goes wrong. Grab hold of the bridge, don't worry about nothing, you just, just cling to the post. Beneath the boat, bitumen, cars and street signs. Under there is the bridge. Bomber McKay abandoned his house last night. Well, I'm getting a bit panicky if it gets in the top story. Hey, hey, I'll be back. In River View Street, the view is usually 100 metres away. Paul Cannon spent a nervous night on his veranda. You can hear the water flapping up underneath the place and we're just watching all the stuff floating down the river. Upstream, Bomber sees his house. There's a swimming pool in there somewhere. One and a half metres of water is roaring through his home. In we go. The floorboards are dry. Five steps and she's in the house. These three homes, looted in the last flood, went under again. 
These houses were all built after the 2008 disaster. No one expected another flood, let alone a bigger one, so soon. We are clearly going to have to go looking at those situations, you know. We're, that's why we've got people up now even taking photographs to give us an idea. Residents forced out wanted to go back. These friends swam across. Oh, they just told us to stay out of the water and not swim around due to a few people have had to be saved. This man tried to, carrying bread and beer above his head. When I'm 1180, so got to be at least two metres or so. He tried again and was rescued. A small community, they're worried about their friends and neighbours. We showed them what they couldn't get to see. Oh my goodness. Tough days ahead. In Emerald, Erin Edwards, 7 News. And the Red Cross will tonight feed evacuees outside the town hall. They're trying to create a street festival atmosphere because it's New Year's Eve, very difficult given what's all around town. Talitha? A tough time for them. Thank you, Pete. The water which has devastated Emerald is draining into the Fitzroy River. The catchment is Australia's second largest. Only the Murray-Darling is bigger. It'll all end up in Rockhampton, which is expecting its worst flooding in almost a century. Floodwaters advance under a blazing summer sun, a rising dark tide that sparked panic buying. People going into panic mode, yeah, because of the floods. We do ask that they could please just settle down. Milk and bread sold out at this Woolworths yesterday. The supermarket chain brought in 43 truckloads of supplies from Brisbane this morning, goods that will have to last until the water goes away. And that's not expected before January 11. Absolute mayhem. Yeah. Like, I've got six kids and I'm only allowed two bottles of milk and two loaves of bread. It's predicted the Fitzroy River will hit 9 metres on Sunday morning, 9.4 on Tuesday. It could go even higher. We're expecting probably 200 houses to have water across the floorboards at this stage uh, and we're expecting anything in the vicinity of 2,000 to 4,000 properties will have water inundation. Water's already in some homes. It's that disgusting, I just don't want my son here. Forced evacuations have begun. Physically be, um, be putting them in, in trucks and flood boats and removing them from their location. There's an evacuation centre at Central Queensland University. Room for 1,000 people. I really hope that they don't leave it too late. Roads in and out of Rockhampton will be cut by tomorrow afternoon. The rail line too. The airport runway will follow tomorrow night. By Tuesday, 40% of the city will be submerged. Rockhampton's biggest flood since 1918. In Rockhampton, Michael Best, 7 News. 22 towns have now been inundated or isolated. The worst flood in decades in Bundaberg is receding faster than expected. Reporter Carly Waters is in the Sugar City, which has got a long way to go to get back to its thriving best. Carly. Talitha, as the water dropped last night and today, it revealed a heartbreaking mess which will take many weeks to recover from. But there's no doubt the she'll be right mate attitude here will see them through their darkest time. Bundaberg, still flooded, still better than it was. The Bernard River is dropping after the worst floods in almost 70 years. Today, some caravan park residents who were told to evacuate made the heartbreaking journey home. The emotions will kick in soon, you know, I'm living up the top there. And basically lost everything now. For others, everything is damaged. Oh, it's terrible. There's mud everywhere. The sewage has been floating around and it stinks. Alan Marshall is a Bundaberg battler. He wouldn't leave. Everyone else was evacuated. Why did you stay? Because we knew the water wouldn't come up too high on us because we are higher than that side. But the mud sticks. North and South Bundaberg have been severed for days. The bridge is now open, but it'll be a long road to recovery. On New Year's Eve, the people here don't have too much to celebrate. They know they've got so much work ahead of them. It'll take weeks to clean up this mess and even longer for life to return to normal. But they're getting stuck into it. They're tough in Bundaberg and they're not complaining. That was the water level there. Like many others, Ian Faulkner can't start cleaning up. His backyard is still a lake. The damage bill is rising. we got some problems here, but some people have got a lot worse problems than what we've got. And more will be revealed as the water goes down.
Now, as you can see, the locals here really need help, and the good news is it's coming. People are donating money, bedding and clothes to flood victims. They're doing whatever they can to help those in need. Talitha. It's nice to see. Thanks, Carly. Julia Gillard toured the Bundaberg and Rockhampton flood zones today, describing her visit as a humbling experience. She comforted residents who've lost their homes and belongings. One man offered the Prime Minister his hand in marriage. Finally, Julie, because I know you're busy, will you marry me? Oh, <laughs> I better get Tim to give you a ring. Okay. Ms Gillard announced relief payments of $1,000 per adult and $400 per child are now available to those worst affected. Condamine on the Darling Downs has been completely evacuated just in time, with the swollen Condamine River now covering three quarters of the town. Reporter Michael Scanlon is in nearby Chinchilla. Michael, trying times for those now homeless. Definitely, Talitha. Not everyone was happy about the move. Some say they were given little warning. Others didn't want to leave their pets behind. Still, authorities say they did their best and the move was essential. Just as night fell, the Blackhawks touched down in Dolby. On board locals from Condamine, the second Queensland town to be evacuated entirely. They were ordered out, authorities fearing the town would be swamped by a record-breaking 15-metre flood. Do you agree with it? Not really, because everyone's fought together so hard to get so far now. The young, the elderly, families, bus to the Dolby Evacuation Centre. It could be a long time before the water recedes and they're allowed home. This morning they woke frustrated. Brett Pyle says locals were given little notice to get out. He couldn't bring his animals. They're left to fend for their own selves, aren't they? <laughs> you know, you can't stay there and look after them. So, things are just going to die. And your dog? Oh, well, they would put a dog down. He's now worried about his personal property when the floodwaters drop. Do you think looting is a possibility? Well, that's a big problem now. The mayor stands by the decision to force the evacuation. From above Condamine, it's clear why. The river has surged through town, threatening to flood everything. In Warra, the cleanup is underway. Yesterday, the town went under. Today, the water has dropped, revealing a big repair job ahead. The second time in here, we cleaned up Tuesday morning and now we're here again. <laughs> in Chinchilla, the water is slowly receding. Even the smallest hands making a difference to get the town back to some normality. From Condamine, the water is heading to the Boulogne River. That means in the coming days, more towns will be in danger. The Weather Bureau says a close watch should now be kept on Surratt, further west. Talitha. Thanks, Michael. Well, the rain responsible for Queensland's flood crisis has fallen in record amounts. Angie Azimuth joins us now. Angie, how much have we had? Talitha, 109 records have been smashed this month. We've exceeded our average rainfall by 400%. Now, it's been Brisbane's wettest December in 151 years. The rest of the state broke some long-standing records too. Jinjin had 804 millimetres, 573 in Bundaberg, almost 500 millimetres fell in Coolangatta, and Springshaw, south of Emerald, had 470 for the month. And Queensland's wettest town for the year, the Golden Gum it goes to Babinda near Tully. Nearly seven metres fell there. And despite all that, blue skies have seen the year out, but the start of 2011 is promising a return to the rain, and I'll have the details soon. Thanks, Angie.